What I find people really like to hear is when you say to them, I believe everyone should be their own doctor because only you know how you feel, only you know what you've been through and only you know how your body responds. And if you've ever been to a doctor who won't listen to you, don't be that doctor. When the body speaks, it's important for you to respond. I find everyone likes that because everyone likes to be listened to. So you listen to what your body says. Have we got some more diseases, students? Was that a hand? A hand there? Yeah. <laughs> Fibromyalgia. This is a strange one because it's almost something you can't see. And the symptoms of fibromyalgia is pain in the muscles, pain in the legs. Pain everywhere. What is it? And what are the causes? So what could possibly be the cause? Any idea, students? Fungal. Pardon? Stress. The eight loss a lot. Yeah, stress. Does it fibromyalgia is an effort from nature to free the system from conditions that arise because of a violation. So when you're looking for the cause, you go through these with the person. And when they say, can you cure it? What do you do when someone says to that? You say, well, I cannot cure anything. But we have found when the body is given the right conditions, it responds. And that's what we can teach you is conditions to give the body to bring about normality to restore balance. So if they say, well, what's causing my pain? You can say, well, I'm not sure. Let, let's investigate. And then you go through the many things. And many people who are in pain, they just want relief. So they reach for the painkillers. They reach for the stimulants to try and give them a little bit of a lift. And that's why it's good to say the lift it gives you, it'll give you a corresponding dump. To take coffee for a lift is like borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. You, you're depleting your resources. What could also cause chemical exposure? You see, we're seeing things today is... We're seeing things today that have never been seen before because we've never been exposed to so many chemicals before. And some theories are that the body stores these environmental poisons in spots in the body that can build up and cause pain. That's, there are several theories. And if, you can always Google fibromyalgia. And what you'll see is all it does is list a whole lot of symptoms. And if you Google it, it'll say that there is no cure. How often does it say that under a disease? So chemicals, look at their chemical exposure. Heavy metal exposure. There are a lot of people who've had fibromyalgia and they've been vaccinated against the COVID and it's twice as bad now. Mold. Have a look at mould. That, uh, that can also be a contributing factor. Dairy. Pardon? Dairy. Dairy, yep, that can be a contributing factor. It's some so. inflammation in the muscles. That's right. Remember your five allergens. No matter what the problem, you, I always eliminate the five allergens as part of bringing normality back. So you have, when you go through the investigation, we're looking at changing unhealthful conditions. What else do we want to change? Wrong habits. Wrong habits. And then assist, yeah? Bad habits. <clears throat> and then assist.
And a great additive to the health retreat is a steam sauna. And we'll be looking at that when we look at setting up the setting up your retreat, some simple options for that. Because the steam penetrates very, very deep. And with fibromyalgia that myalgia that can really relax those muscles. If there's tight cramping muscles, what can you use for that? There's two yeah, massage, sauna, magnesium oil. Magnesium oil can relax, yes. Uh, when you mention sauna, what about infrared sauna? Yes, infrared is quite good. But to do a steam sauna is a little cheaper to set up. I mean, you can even have a wooden chair and put a kettle under it. <laughs> and put a sheet, you know, there are some very simple things you can do. But the infrared can, can be quite an expense. So assist, so assist could be detox. And that's where you, you're looking at your two days juices. Two days on juices. And sometimes we'll have someone come on Monday afternoon and say, I can't stand this anymore, I don't want to juice anymore. So what we usually say is, well, what about we give you the 8 o'clock juice, the 10 o'clock juice, the 12 o'clock juice, and then you have lunch? And they'll, of they'll often be open for that. Because we say, um, please appreciate that our other guests are fasting, so we need to feed you somewhere separate. I was at a health retreat recently, and the guests were fasting. And I gave a one-hour lecture in the morning and a one-hour lecture in the evening. And the guy that came to lecture, he came in with a bowl of food and was <laughs> eating the food <laughs> while he's filming. <laughs> we, we wouldn't have uh, agreed to that at our retreat. If you, You've got to keep away from the guests when they're, when they're we're fasting. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, one of the guests said, what are you doing? Well, how do you think we feel listening to you tap your plate every time the spoon, you know, this lady said it like it is. <laughs> the guy looked very sheepish. <laughs> but it is true. Be very mindful of, uh, of the guests when they're juicy. And we often find that uh, that, that will work. It's again, it's talking to them and, and, uh, and putting different options. Because the mind, it, will, it always works with the stomach. That's why if someone's uh, not feeling well, I'll say to them, um, would you like another juice? No, 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 no. Would you, would you like uh, some peppermint tea? Ah, oh, yeah, I'll try that. So the thought of it, it's almost as if the stomach and the mind are together will. And so we, we just go with what they say. Yes, yes, I'll try that. So the five allergens have to go out, the eight laws. Again, apply it to what that person can do. But detoxing is quite important with fibromyalgia because they're usually contributing factors. And remember, different people respond in different ways when the chemicals are in. As you do your investigation, you'll find out how they are in the water. You'll find out what they're eating. You'll find out if they are exercising. And most people with fibromyalgia will say, you don't understand, I, I can't exercise. My legs are so sore. So then you might have options. Can you swim? No, no, I don't like swimming. I'm nowhere near a swimming pool. Anyway, there is a swimming pool, but it's chlorine. And I don't want to go in there. And we can understand that. So then you're then you might suggest having a massage once a week and uh, exercise the rebound because there's no jarring with rebounding. Yes? Could a keto program be, be applicable in this case? Uh, possibly. It's not as important as with uh, neurological, as with 
cancer. Cancer is very similar to keto. So you'd feel your way because some people, they're miserable with their aches and pains and, you know, that, they don't want you to, they don't want it to be that restrictive. And so you, you feel your way with it, yeah? Is it, is it the muscles or is it in other tissues too? It can be in other tissues, yeah. Yeah, so um, gentle exercising, exercise bike, they might, they might, uh, yeah, I could do that. Or sometimes I suggest they get a Pilates DVD and, you know, it can go on the television and the person takes them through a bit of a workout. And I always say to them, you won't be able to do everything, but just do the things that you can do. So you, you're making it reachable. You're just starting with where they're at. But some form, the body has to move. And then you could explain to them how when you start exercising, it causes more blood to go into the area and more blood coming into the area brings more nutrition, more oxygen, more water, takes the waste out. So often with fibromyalgia, you've got buildup in the tissues and that's where the uh, exercise is important and also a massage. But if they can't afford a massage, then you target more the exercise. And if they can't do much, even just you know, a few minutes, a few times a day. So starting with what they can do. So you say it's a buildup of toxins in the tissue? Often it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That is one theory. You might be able to come up with another theory if you investigate. But something's causing those muscles to be painful. If it responds to magnesium oil, then you investigate how much coffee and stimulants they're having, which is leaching the magnesium out. So remember, you're looking history, you're looking at symptoms, and you're looking at response. It's like the lady had a very bad back, and we... That's not right. <laughs> trying to master saying one thing and writing another. She had a very bad back, so we tried a ginger poultice on her lower back. It did not help at all, and it didn't even get hot. So it wasn't due to inflammation. <laughs> so we looked at her body's response. That's not working, so let's try maybe a castor oil. So yes, you're looking at history, and you're looking at symptoms, and you're looking at response. So depending on what you find as you investigate the cause, you will adjust it accordingly. Yeah? Another theory that I have for you is that the brain is not correct function, so they give false signals to the nerves that they should release pain even if there is no threat yeah. for them. So can we also adjust to that? And sometimes the... the uh, the brain gets into the habit of that, that is true. But if, but you might not even discuss that, or you might, depending on how open they are to it and how you can, you can change that around. So rewiring the brain. Um, I'll give you a story, and this story was, is found in a book um, by Norman Doidge. So that's... Um, I'll have to remember to write those down for you. So Norman Doidge wrote a book, Who's, um, The Brain That Changes Itself. And that, that book is about, that, that's where I first read about the uh, 1998 discovery of the brain-derived neurotrophic factor. But he's written another book called The Healing Brain. And in The Healing Brain, the second chapter, he gives a story about a man who's a, pain specialist and he had a um, water skiing accident where the skis went into his back. I think he had some surgery but after the surgery he was always in pain so he was on pain killing medication. After a couple of years on this he began to realise that, that there was not a good future here. <laughs> he was still in pain, he was addicted to the pain killing medication and he knew what the pain-killing medication was doing to his kidneys and to his liver. And he believed that his 
back was in the habit of sending off pain signals, similar to what you say. So he developed a program to conquer this and he used the acronym MIRROR. He was motivated to change. He didn't want to live like this anymore. So he was going to make some changes. So he was motivated. Intention. That reminds me of what Daniel did. He purposed in his heart. <laughs> an intention. He had an intention. And he knew that he lived in a reliable body. There's no doubt about that. He lived in a reliable body that has the ability to regenerate. And he was relentless in his task to conquer this. And every pang of pain he took as an opportunity to picture in his mind a pain-free brain. And he knew what the scan of a pain-free brain looked like. And you might think, well, how do I do that? I don't know what a pain, a scan of a pain-free brain looks like. Well, just picture a, a brain that has no pain. Maybe it's got a big smiley face. Maybe it's got a bit of roses in there. Maybe it's a peaceful scene. Maybe you'll just picture no pain here. And he knew that he would get restoration. Now there's another word for all of that, isn't it? Faith. Faith in this amazing body that has the ability to heal itself. So he implemented Mirror. He woke up every day motivated, intention to conquer this. He knew he lived in a reliable body. He was relentless. Nothing deterred him from his task. And every pang of pain, he took that as an opportunity to picture the pain-free brain. After two and a half weeks, he's in just as much pain. How many people would give up then? But remember, he was relentless. By the end of the third week, he was experiencing relief. How many days to change the habit? 21 days, yeah. He became pain-free. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? What was the name? Again. What was the name again? Uh, the Brain's Way of Healing by Dr. Norman yeah, Doidge. No, the Brain That Changes Itself. There's two books. Oh, the two, yeah. The Brain That Changes the Brain That Changes Itself was his first book, and then The Brain's Way of Healing is the book that has this, has this in it. And his name? Dr. Norman Doidge is the name of the author. The name of the man that did this, it's a long European name that you might be better at memorising than me. <laughs> Merch Lakoff or something like that. <laughs> I'm on the plane when I'm reading this. And I wanted to get up and say, listen to this, everyone. <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible. He did it. He rewired his brain. Because that does happen. It's exactly what you say, Katia, that the brain can get into the habit of shooting pain signals. And we've got to change that around, rewiring the brain. He was so excited that he started to teach his patients. Remember, he's a pain specialist. One lady got out of her wheelchair and started walking again. But others did not because they weren't relentless. <laughs> he wouldn't allow anything to deter him from his task, even after two and a half weeks and still pain. And I think I told you about Dr. Paul Brand and his book, uh, The Gift of Pain, where he had that severe gall pain and he was 
unable to get it attended to because he was so busy. So in the middle of the night, he walked along the paths in his hospital in India and the paths had cracked shells on them. <laughs> that barefoot, that would hurt. He said it took the edge off this pain, <laughs> it diverted him. When he got back from his walk, he had, his feet were sore, but he could handle that. But his pain was down 50%. He was able to sleep. So this is, this is something you can share with people, that, that that is possible. It is possible to rewire the brain. But some people might take offence when you imply that they're in the habit of <laughs> shooting pain signals. That's why it's great to give a story. It gives a story about someone else who was able to conquer it. Yes? And I'm assuming this, that they can't, can't sleep, but they awake completely restless. So like they go into bed again. So yeah. they have no really good sleep. Well, the other is Epsom salts bath before they go to bed. Remember Epsom, there's two things that will relax the muscle, and that is magnesium and moist heat. And if they don't have a bath, they might rub the magnesium topical oil into their muscles and put some hot water bottles maybe <laughs> on their legs. Or um, there is a use for a microwave. It's heating the... We have them in Australia. They're heating packs and they're made out of buckwheat, mm -hmm. like a pillow with buckwheat in it, and you heat it up in the microwave and can lay it on. So again, you're, you're also looking at symptoms and making different suggestions and seeing what they respond to. And another part of the fibromyalgia, remember the silent killer? What's the silent killer? It's exposure to electromagnetic fields. And some people that can't sleep, they look at their phone to, to pass the time. And that's where, remember the sleepy herbs we looked at, the valerium, chamomile, simple herbs to just relax them. Any other diseases? Yes? I don't have a disease in itself, but I have a 14-year-old girl. She goes to school and she just sleeps in, she can't stay awake and even if she sometimes is outside with her friends, she just says she's so tired now, she has to lay down. Does she sleep at night? We don't really know. Yeah, because that's what you would have a look at, are they sleeping at night? So if they are sleeping at night, seeing what you're doing, um, it could be that she has an allergy to the gluten because that's one of the symptoms of a gluten intolerance. Remember the lady whose husband fell asleep in the restaurant? So the politicians who fall asleep in Parliament, you probably see they take photos of them. Look at this politician who's asleep in there. There's a, there's a reason. And often it's just given a name, but there's a reason. There's always a cause. Proverbs 26 verse 2 states that the curse causeless shall not come. Most people don't realise what their causes should be. So let me suggest one, osteoporosis. This is quite common today, unfortunately. And God never meant for bones to deteriorate. So what's the cause of osteoporosis? What could cause minerals to be leached out of bones? Dairy. Dairy. So we'll say what leeches? Yeah, le leaching minerals. Yeah. What what leaches minerals? What leaches min is dairy? Absolutely, because uh, remember I showed you the other day the glass of milk, glass of milk high in protein, high in calcium, and that animal protein only fifty eight percent is burnt as fuel. That leaves a 42% waste. 
and it's a sulfur waste, which is highly acid. What's the most alkaline mineral? So that calcium is used to negate the sulfur waste. How much calcium is left for our body? So that's a good illustration to give to people. And cows have five stomachs. And the countries in this, in this world with the highest incidence of osteoporosis are the highest dairy consumers. And yet what are people told to get their calcium levels up? To drink <laughs> milk. That's right. So dairy is one that leaches minerals. What else can leach minerals? Meat with its high, high protein content and of course that it's very dirty burning fuel. The, the vegetarian protein is not like that. It does not leave that acid waste. Any other things that can leach the minerals? Eggs. Pardon? Eggs. Yeah, eggs, probably, we'll, we'll just say meat and eggs. What about some stimulants? Coffee, yes, caffeine. And what do many people put into their cup of coffee? Sugar. And to make chocolate palatable, they have to put a lot of this into it, sugar. <laughs> have you ever had, a, had tasted um, a cup of cocoa with no sugar in it? You almost wouldn't drink it. It is so bitter. So that gives an indication of how much sugar is in is in the caffeine foods, the caffeine drinks. So all, all of these are mineral leaches. And so adding to osteoporosis. So what, what else do we need to do? We need to ascertain the cause. Another cause can be inactivity. Not, so we're looking at causes. So not only are muscles deteriorating with no exercise, inactivity, so do bones. So when you exercise, you not only strengthen your muscles, but you strengthen your bones. So let's have a look at some... Uh, Again, we, the laws of health, absolutely the true remedies, but let's make this directly applicable to osteoporosis. So number one, exercise. What type of exercise will strengthen the bones? Weight-bearing exercise. So what's your best weight-bearing exercise? It's rebounding. Yeah. Even rebounding, holding on to some weights. But again, you start slow. You start with what the person can cope with, little by little. Don't, don't get it too hard too fast. So rebounding is great. Uh, Push-ups, you're pushing against gravity. Gardening. Yes, gardening. I guess it depends what you're doing gardening. If you're just picking out weeds, you're not doing a lot. <laughs> but if you're hoeing the ground, there's, there's a little bit happening there. That's not spelt right, is it? Rebounding. And that's daily. You want to build up the bones, that has to happen daily. Number two, the bones are made of osteoblast cells and osteoclast cells. The osteoblast cells build the new bone, the osteoclasts take away the old bone. Can you remember earlier in the week we looked at something that boosts osteoblast cells? Progesterone. That's all right. The the uh, the comfrey certainly is is called knit bone, progesterone. And so we need to balance the hormones. And by balancing the hormones, boosting progesterone. So 
Sometimes a doctor will give oestrogen for osteoporosis because it slows down the osteoclast cells, slowing down the taking away of old bone. But we really want to boost the new bone cells, which is, uh, which is what progesterone does. So progesterone boosts your osteoclast. Osteo means bone, blast is new bones. Specifically with what? Which kind of food? Um, the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, we talked about that. We talked about the hormone balancing herbs, your Don Quai, your Evening Primrose, Maca. Four. Uh, <clears throat> three. What are bones made of? Minerals. Minerals. Where are we going to get the minerals from? Celtic salt. Celtic salt, yep. Not a lot there, but you're still getting some. But where are we going to get the most from? Dark green, dark green leafy vegetables. So either eat them, eat them in abundance or have some green barley or super green, something like that. And I use tahini. Yes, yes. Tahini, tahini is quite a nice additive and that's, that's, that's very nice in, uh, to make your salad dressings with. There's a few Lebanese dishes that have Tahini, like your hummus and your baba gamush, you're familiar with that, the roasted eggplant. They all have tahini in them. But you make a salad dressing with tahini and you can pour that on every day. My children used to love after their meal is they'd have toast, tahini and honey. They love that. When we went on a picnic, we'd, I'd often make uh, thin flatbreads, tahini and chopped olives and roll that up. Yeah. So if, you, if you're getting your sweetness right down, chopped olives and tahini is delicious. And of course, number four is to stop. Stop all the things that are leaching, leaching the minerals. So stop stop the mineral leeches. And make sure they're well hydrated. Going to bed early because it's in the, in the, especially the early parts of the night where your new cells are made quicker. Do they need sun? Yes. Why do they need sun? Vitamin D, yeah, that's right. So vitamin D, if their vitamin D levels are low, a supplement may be necessary initially because vitamin D is essential in the absorption and simulation of calcium. Also assess stress. And this basically takes in the law number eight. And then we can get a turnaround with osteoporosis. Yeah? Castor oil. Mm, yeah, castor oil. It, it wouldn't hurt. That could go in and cleanse. Um, so we'll put down here as number seven. You might alternate with comfrey. Comfrey is the, the healer and castor oil is the cleanser. Circulation is very important. Perfect health requires perfect circulation.
Perfect circulation means the whole body is the same temperature. I find this is not usually a problem with men, but it definitely can be a problem with women. Their feet must be warm so that the blood's circulating through the whole body. Men basically wear jeans, socks and shoes, shirts, you know, whereas ladies, you know, they might wear sandals and a dress that's shorter, which is all right on a hot summer's day, but sometimes you see them wearing them in the winter. <laughs> and what's the life of the flesh? Yeah. It's the blood. That's right. So, in, so ensure that the blood is, is circulating through the body in a balanced way to keep the body warm. And it wouldn't hurt to uh, finish every hot shower with cold to also boost stimulation. Yep, hot and cold. So we've got a program for osteoporosis. It has natural uh, fever for the clothing. Not having yes, fever. yes. So what we've also got to do is make sure stop the chemicals. Yeah. Yes. Uh, can we suggest the next one? Sure. Or <laughs> understand. <laughs> no, my suggestion was very similar. I guess osteoarthritis is very similar to the program for osteoporosis. Or um, in a way, except with the osteoarthritis, you're going to target more inflammation. So maybe we could look at inflammation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one I was thinking of was lupus, that's inflammation. Yeah. The lupus and that would be a very similar to uh, leukemia. Okay. So inflammation, and that really is... Uh, very much with um, arthritis. So that could be arthritis and gout. So we go through the laws. Oxygen is an anti-inflammatory. Sunshine, even though sunshine's hot, it moves blood. And when you get blood in and out of the area, um, that can reduce inflammation. And number three, uh, cease, cease all chemicals, which can feed inflammation. You see what we use as our guideline? Early nights. Exercise. What type of exercise can you have for someone with inflamed joints? Swimming. Swimming. That's right. No jarring. Must be no drumming. So no jarring and there's no jarring in swimming. But when you run, <laughs> there's jarring. So rebounding. And the other exercise where they there's no jarring is the exercise bike. So again, you find out what the person can do and will do. Number six, diet. So what would be the best foods? With inflammation, we need to get the lectins out, is that right? So need, need be mindful of exposure to lectins. So, so what group of vegetables would we eliminate in the inflammation? Tomatoes. The nightshades, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
eliminate the nightshades, which is tomatoes, capsicum, eggplant, and white potato. So then it's, it's important to bring them in alternatives. So what will I have in my salad? You can have avocado, you can have grated carrot, grated beetroot, celery, lettuce. What can I have for my baked? Baked pumpkin, baked sweet potato. Eliminate the nightshades. So it sounds like we've also got to eliminate the five. Eliminate the five. We'll just say the five. The five must go. Because the oats and the wheat are the highest lectin foods. Do they have to eliminate le legumes? What have they got to do with the legumes? Well soaked. Soaked. Well rinsed, dirty water away, and ideally, if possible, pressure cooked. Because the pressure cooking, what does that do to the lectins? Destroys them. Destroys them. And what's another way we can help to uh, prevent the lectins getting into the blood? Because remember, when they get into the blood, they increase the inflammation. What's that barrier that can disarm them? It's our gut flora. Yeah, so you might uh, daily, daily sauerkraut, yogurt. Miso. What some people like is uh, maybe on some crackers have a light spear of miso and then avocado on that. That's quite a nice. That's quite nice. Miso is very nice mixed with a little water and put in with your lentils. Gives a very nice flavour. What's, uh, what, what sort of, uh, on the pH scale, what sort of foods are they best to concentrate on? Alkaline, Alkaline. Alkaline foods, yeah. So what are your two uh, lectin-free grains? Millet. Millet and sorghum. So your alkaline foods, concentrate on them. It doesn't mean you, you can't have rice. It doesn't mean you can't have chickpeas, but just try and make most of the food the alkaline foods. But what, what drink would really alkalize? The green drinks, but also your 80% carrot. 10% celery and 10% apple. That's a very alkalizing drink. And about 40 years ago, there was a popular book called How to Eliminate Arthritis. And the writer advocated having two or three of those drinks a day because their ability to alkalize. Or and green drinks. So ten food. Well, basically, we've done food there, haven't we? So I'll include in there, you want high fibre, 
generous proteins and your healthy fats. So you might type up an acid alkaline balance to give them, to show them. You might also type up a lectin program to show what, how they can get their lectins levels down or their exposure to lectins. And you might even start a program in your computer where you'll have like a template and you can adjust it per person and print out a program for them. And that's where it's nice to have the eight laws as your format. Getting to seven, hydration. Number ten, 11, assess stress. Number 12, what could someone take as a supplement if they had a lot of inflammation? Cocoa. Pardon? Cocoa. Cocoa. No, cocoa. Turmeric? Turmeric. Oh, sorry, this one. And take that as supplements. That's very good for inflammation. What could they do if they had painful joints? Ginger. Ginger. <coughs> and remember to give them a word of caution. Don't overdo it. Ginger poultice. Also internally. Yeah, I find turmeric a bit more potent internally, but it wouldn't hurt to drink to sip on ginger tea. What happens if you overdo it? Skin gets irritated. Uh -huh. So you'll do it for maybe two or three hours a day. Mm -hmm. If someone does it overnight, that's perfectly fine, but maybe the next night they'll do castor oil. Then the next night, ginger. Because remember, if there is inflammation in the joint, the skin can get very hot. And if you put it on just before you go to bed, then the person might wake in a couple of hours with, ah, my knee's on fire. So that's why we put it on, say, 6 o'clock. They're going to go to bed at 9 o'clock. By 9 o'clock, you, you know, you, I always say to them, how does it feel? And if they say, oh, it's a bit hot, I think I'd like to take it off, that's fine. If they say, oh, it feels so good, can I leave it there? Perfectly fine. Remember the lady that changed her ginger poultice every six hours, non-stop? And by the end of the third session, the, the knee was swollen and the skin inflamed and blisters, she just overdone it. Would garlic be a help in this situation? Well, I have heard of one medical missionary who suggested um, garlic on inflamed joints and it blisters. And they claim that when the blisters break, a lot of the uh, the uric acid is coming out, but it it sounds like a bit of a harsh treatment to me. And so then a person's got all these painful blisters. But take it internally, eat it. You could take it, yeah, yeah. Again, if the person can take it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, it's not as powerful with inflammation as is the turmeric. Yes? Uh, for this one too, I guess, uh, alternate comfrey and the castor oil. Yes. And yeah. also do uh, hot and cold. Yes, yes. The, the, we'll put 14 up here. Hot and colds can certainly bring relief. And comfrey. 
Come through, can stimulate healing to that area and remember the castor oil can cleanse the area. I mean, some might put ginger one night, comfrey another night, castor oil another night. Again, you're looking for response. Yeah? If the joint has uh, deteriorated, uh, would it be a good idea to use uh, uh, the components of soft bone to, to try and build it up? Or would that work at all? Uh, it can. It can. That is true. But to help to build it up again, you want blood supply in there. And you also want to get inflammation down. And that's where the comfrey can can come to help rebuild. And if it's difficult to wear the comfrey poultice to the area, um, the comfrey cream, applying the comfrey cream several times a day. What is your experience with MSM? Uh, I don't have experience with that, mm. with the MSM. Uh, it's the, it's a mineral supplement, isn't it? Organic supplement. Sulfur. Organic sulfur. So it's not MMS, it's MSM. Organic yes, sulfur. So students, it's been a long day and we've solved a lot of problems today, haven't we? So we're going to call it a day and uh, look forward to resuming our our classes tomorrow, so I'll ask God to, to close our meeting. Father in heaven, we thank you again for what you've shown us today, and we pray that we will all receive a, a great night's sleep where our knowledge that we've learnt today is consolidated and confirmed in our mind, and we can awake refreshed and revived in the morning for our next day of our, our classes. So we pray now that you'll bless our evening and we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.